rare earths, this group of 17 mighty elements that are powering everything from electric vehicles to wind turbines and you can even touch them with your hands right in here. But it's not just electronics and green technologies that depends on rare earths. It's also missile guidance systems and even cancer treatments. Here's what's crazier. China controls 90% of them. And it's not because they have 90% of deposits, but because they have the highest processing power for rare earths. In this video, I want to dive deep into rare earths with you, show you some of the most interesting and cool facts about them, but also show you how the future might be a little bit different to what it is now. Because for this new era of green technologies to be truly revolutionary, we must make sure that we extract rare earths in a totally different way. Let's get into it. Rare earths are not actually rare. Their name is a little bit misleading because some of them are actually as abundant as copper on the Earth's crust. I don't know about you, but every time I think of mining, I just have this old school picture in my brain of just a bunch of people boring a hole through a mountain and then extracting something like coal and little carts from it and then taking it outside. Now, this could not be further from the truth. Modern mining is nothing like that, and I am just scratching the surface in understanding how complex this industry truly is. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, most mines for anything, even for common things and common minerals like nickel, take anywhere from 15 to 20 years just to establish. The reason why is because mining companies need to survey the land, make sure that they're boring holes and extracting metals, in an economically viable way, and that includes designing machines and pipelines entirely from scratch in order to be able to process this particular type and consistency of soil and ore that comes out of this particular piece of land. This is the tricky part with rare earth minerals. They're not just sitting there in blobs hanging out alone, they kind of love their friends. They're usually found attached to other things, uranium actually included, and to separate them is a very difficult process. And the funny thing is, one of their first uses had nothing to do with all these important technologies that we're currently using them in. It was actually back in the 60s and 70s when color TVs started being developed. And Japan was one of the biggest importers of rare earths because they were one of the main countries producing color TVs. No one at the time could probably have predicted that they would become so incredibly important. And I want to give you a few examples in order to truly understand what rare earths are used for. Let's play a little game. I'll tell you some of the uses for rare earths and I want you to find the common thread that all these items have together. You see, these four rare earth minerals are used in electric vehicles, wind turbines, hard disk drives, headphones and MRI machines. Can you guess why? They make incredible permanent magnets and all these technologies require extremely strong magnets to work within them. But why have they become such a tense subject of conversation around geopolitics? A single F-35 contains over 900 pounds of rare earth elements. A Virginia-class submarine uses approximately 9,000 at 200 pounds. These permanent magnets that we were talking about before are actually incredibly important in making sure missile guidance systems work appropriately. And I want you to go a level deeper and understand what this actually means for critical infrastructure and specifically for defense technology. So it's not a surprise that rare earth minerals have become a pawn in every single conversation from diplomatic relations to trade wars and even tariffs. We will get back to China in a moment, but the reason why the US and other Western countries have such small deposits and almost no processing capacity is because their extraction is incredibly environmentally polluting. Back in the 1990s, the US willingly seized most of its rare earth mining and extraction because it was so environmentally polluting. And although the US is now trying to increase the domestic supply of rare earths, it is something that will take 5, 6 or even 10 years in order to see results. So back to this scary graph. The Nidia has been flooded with graphs of rare earths just like this showing that China controls 90% of all rare earth minerals at the moment. But 
What if I told you that there is one singular mine where nearly half of the world's supply of rare earths is found? This infamous mine in northern China, in an area called Inner Mongolia, is the largest rare earth mine in the entire world. It is estimated that it contains in excess of 100 million tons. This open pit mine produces iron ore, but it also produces 15 different kinds of rare earth minerals. It is an area that spreads for over 48 kilometers, but it doesn't come without a cost. This is by an oboe. Take a very close look at these pictures. When NASA first published them, it changed our entire perception of what is the cost of our technology. This is what the mine used to look like in the early 2000s. These are the open pits of the mine where the extraction of metals begins. Each one is over a kilometer across. And this is what Bionova looks just a few years later. It has almost doubled in size. But the most important thing on this map is actually these parts over here. They are the tailing ponds, and they have been described as nightmarish, an endless expanse of viscous gray sludge, and a dystopian lake filled with the world's tech last. For every ton of rare earth minerals produced, there's over 2,000 tons of waste. And tailing ponds is what is used during the mining process to store this excess waste. Because rare earths are so commonly found bundled up with other elements, including uranium and thorium, which are radioactive, these tailing ponds contain radioactive waste as well. The Chinese government has been trying to contain them since the 1980s, and there's tons of studies published on them. But they're not perfectly contained. This sludge is moving at a rate of 20 to 30 centimeters each year. And there's multiple accounts from farmers and residents of the nearby areas saying how over the years they have lost their crops, their animals, and even their health. The biggest concern is that this waste is going to eventually reach the Yellow River, the main water supply for over 150 million people. But the healing ponds, this big soup of waste, is where the biggest opportunity lies as well. Okay, really quickly before we continue, I want to point out that every single report on Bionovo shows that if this mine ceases operations or just scales them back significantly, the entire world goes into a halt. These minerals are literally used in almost everything that makes our world go around. And most experts agree that there's no technology or environmental management program that we currently have that can contain the situation. This is obviously a very politically charged subject and reports vary depending on which side of the world you get your news from. But back into why scientists are so excited about these Haley ponds. And for that, we might need to take a quick little history lesson first. Did you know that the way we mine over 25% of the world's copper right now is not through shovels and chemical processes or magnetic separation and all these other things, but it's actually through bacteria. This is called bioleaching. We have known about this process for thousands of years. Some accounts go all the way back to 150 BC in China, again, when miners noticed that if they dipped their iron tools into a certain type of spring that had this bluish hue, their tools would come out and be covered in bright copper. For a very long time, we thought this was some form of magic. But eventually we realized that there's many different types of bacteria that act as tiny little workers and can separate one very specific type of metal from the rest. And I hope you know where this is going. Just estimate that just in the Bayan Obo tailing ponds, you can find over 25 million tons of rare earths. Rare earths, by the way, are themselves toxic, so it's not just the uranium and the other things that are found within them. So scientists have been focusing on trying to create a custom type of tiny little miner that can go inside these tailing ponds and grab just one type of rare earth. Now, I cannot stress this enough. It's not an easy process. Genetically modifying a bacteria to do this or trying to find one out in nature is very difficult. And although there have been a lot of successes on the lab bench, like this study that shows that certain types of fungi can do this bioleaching process with rare earths, these technologies are usually 
a very difficult road to scale. These technologies work very well at small amounts and control environments, but what happens out in the world and when you need to do it in massive amounts is a completely different process. One of the companies that has garnered a lot of attention in the rare earth sphere that is trying to piece together all these different mechanisms that we know of that can give us minerals in a much more environmentally friendly way is Alta Resource Technologies. They're based in Colorado, and instead of trying to find a microbe out in the wild or a bacteria that does this naturally, they have tried to design proteins that can specifically bind to certain rare earth minerals. These proteins would be acting as a super specialized sponge and only suck up the exact type of thing you want to do. I cannot stress enough how important technologies like this are going to be in the future, because Although we are not running out of rare earths anytime soon, we want a future where developing green technologies doesn't come with an immediate drawback of hurting the earth. So consider this the world's biggest chicken and egg situation, where decarbonizing rare earth extraction is going to be a huge step up in creating truly carbon negative technologies. And thank you so much for watching.